Corporate Finance OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in OneNote related to a break-even analysis projection plan. In other words, we're going to use the break-even analysis to think about a plan in the future, comparing and contrasting what would happen under one scenario and another scenario using break-even analysis. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you would like to follow along in OneNote, you're not required to, but if you have access to it and would like to, we are in the 515 Break Even Analysis Projection Plan tab in the Practice Problems section. Closing this back out, we're going to go through a couple different scenarios. So we'll go through the first one here, going through the problem or the information for it first, then seeing a smaller portion of that information we will use to work through the practice problem. And then we'll do a second similar problem as well. We're using a break-even analysis. The problem is going to be having the sales price uh, per unit is $75. The variable cost per unit is going to be $40. Fixed cost, $250,000. That's going to be our starting point. And then once we have this starting point, we could start to think about, well, what if we did A, B, and C? What if we did something in the future? What if we made a change? Someone has an idea. They want to make a change. Plan to reduce fixed costs to 210000 So there's a proposal then. It says, hey, I think we can reduce the fixed cost uh, to 210000 from the 250000 However, in doing so, the variable cost per unit will increase. So we can imagine a, a situation where we're saying, okay, possibly we can reduce uh, the fixed costs that we're paying for, but in order to do so, it might take more man hours to do it, right? It might take us some more hours possibly in order to do so. Therefore, the variable costs would be increasing from 40 to 47. So we're going to be taking the, the fixed cost down from 250 down to 210, variable costs up from 40 to 47. What would happen in terms of a break-even analysis? In other words, how many units would we need to produce under both of these scenarios in order to break even? That might be a good starting point for us to think about whether this would be a good idea or not. So we could say, all right, well, if we do our break-even analysis in the in the standard scenario, the first scenario where we're sitting at this point in time before we make the change, we're going to say that we have our break-even calculation, fixed cost divided by the contribution margin per unit, or fixed cost divided by the variable, the sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. So on the right-hand side, we're going to have the fixed cost, which is the 250000 Then we'll calculate the contribution margin per unit, which will then be the sales price per unit at the $75 sales price per unit. And then we will subtract then the variable cost per unit, the $40. That will then give us the contribution margin of the $35. So we're going to take our 250,000 fixed cost then and divide it by our contribution margin per unit, 250,000 divided by about 35. There could be rounding here. That would be about then the 7,143, 7,143. So that's how many units we would need to calculate. Let's let's plug that back into our contribution income statement just to practice doing that, just to prove this in a contribution margin type of income statement where we would have these sales calculated as the sales price per unit, that being the $75 per unit on the sales price times the units we're going to sell, that now being the 7,143, 75 times the 7,143 gives us sales of 535, 714, that being our sales price in dollars, uh, the break-even point in dollars, and then we have the variable costs, which are going to be calculated as, notice we have the variable cost as a second component as opposed to cost of goods sold here, because we're breaking it out in a contribution margin type of income statement. That being the variable cost per unit, now $40 times the units we're going to sell, 7143 40 times the 7143 gives us the variable costs total of 285714 So if we have the total contribution margin then is going to be the the sales price total sales price minus the total variable costs giving us the total contribution margin which of course we can also get to by taking the unit contribution margin it's going to take rounding here but 35 unit contribution margin times the number of units times 7143 and that gives us about because there's rounding the 250 so we can jump right there in that way as well so then uh, we're going to say the fixed costs are 250000 That means we, we are at the break-even. So that is indeed the break-even point in units. That's 7,143 units. Well, what if we do B then? What if we take this scenario and say, okay, we're going to cut down the fixed costs to uh, 210000 We're going to be paying less in terms of the fixed costs. 
But in order to do that, possibly it takes more man hours, possibly some more labor hours. That means that it's going to increase the variable cost by $7 from 40 to 47. What will that do to our break even? Do we have to make more or less units in that uh, in that case? Well, the fixed costs are now 210 rather than the 250. The contribution margin per unit then, now it's going to be the sales price per unit still at the 75. The variable costs are now 47. Therefore, the contribution margin is now $28. If we take the uh, fixed costs, which are now at the 210 lower fixed cost divided by contribution margin, meaning we're keeping less after the fixed cost after the um, variable costs are considered, we're at 7,500 in terms of the units now, which I believe is more than it was before, right? Oh no, it's yeah, it's more. So we would have to make more units under this. So we'll do a comparison in a second. Let's just go ahead and prove this. We're gonna say, all right, let's prove this in our net income calculation. This is our basically income statement on a contribution margin type of format. Sales is gonna be the sales price per unit, now still 75. The units sold, now we're gonna assume 7,500 because that's our break even point. Bottom line of this income statement will be zero if we have done things correctly because that's what we're, that's what the break even means. <laughs> so their total sales, 75 times 7,500 is gonna be five. 62.5 then we got the variable costs calculated at the variable cost per unit $47 times the units 7500 that's going to give us the total variable cost of 352500 the contribution margin then being the sales minus the total variable cost or the 210000 if we then subtract out the fixed costs we're going to get back to zero once again be aware of the variable costs and the contribution margin uh, per unit versus the total. This is the total. We can also get to it by taking the contribution margin per unit, which is about 28. There's rounding times uh, the number of units times the 7500, that being that 210. No rounding here. It's exact that time. So then if we look at our comparison between these two, just with the break-even calculation, we're going to say, well, uh, even though we knocked down the fixed costs it looks like we would need to to make more in order to break even now that might not be our only consideration we might we might uh, project this on out out further and think about it in more detail but if we just consider how many units we have to uh we have to generate in order to clear the uh fixed costs <clears throat> then uh the the new proposal would mean we would need more we would need 7,500 units to break even under the new proposal versus the prior proposal uh, 7,143 now if we use our projected income statement up here we can start looking at different scenarios like it start changing this number of units to higher or lower and, and you know or higher from here you know from the break even increasing to see what the effect would be you can see you can imagine these two contribution income statements side by side easily changing with the change in the units sold the, because because of the the relationship we have between the variable costs and the fixed cost, so we can easily then say, well, what if I sold this many units? And we could start to plot uh, points under the two under the two scenarios uh, in this way, which is which is why we have it. It's quite useful. So then let's take a look at an, another one, very similar type of problem. We have the sales price per unit. We have the variable cost per unit starting point, the fixed costs at the 160. Someone says, hey. What if we purchase new equipment at a cost of 330000 We think that that'll take the fixed cost to 200000 because the fixed costs were one sixty. they They're going to increase the fixed costs. Why? Because the fixed costs are going to be increased by the depreciation. So this is a little bit more complex, and we'll discuss it in a second. But the variable costs then are going to be $3, so the variable costs are going to go down. So this is a common type of scenario. We're going to say, okay, you know, the variable costs could go down if we buy a new piece of equipment, possibly software or machinery. So we can invest in the software or machinery and that'll take down our variable costs. It'll take down possibly our man hours or our uh, working hours, our labor hours down. But it, it could, you know, take that investment that will take into, into play. So what's going to happen here with this investment. So if we put $330,000 down right now, uh, what's gonna be the effect on our calculation? Well, and this is one way we can go about looking at it. We, we would take a look at a long-term investment a, a few different ways. One way we can think about it is to say, well, that 330,000 that we put down or take out a loan in order to finance the equipment will then be on the books as an asset, not as an expense. And then we will allocate the cost of that 
to the each period allocating the cost in the period that it will be used in we call that depreciation so the reason the fixed costs are going up aren't because of the 330,000 that we might pay for it because that would be an asset that we're purchasing we're thinking that of that as an asset but it will be because of the allocation of the depreciation to the current time period so this number is going up the fixed costs but not by the initial cash outlay but by the depreciation so we can do a comparison like that and say, well, what would happen under this comparison? It probably, and then it probably would not be the only comparison that we would do. So this is one comparison we would do with this, uh, like a big investment like this. We would also want to think about, well, how, how long will this equipment last? You know, how much will it depreciate into, uh, into the future and take into consideration time value of money, uh, including like inflation in the future and what, what else w could we do with that money? if we were to invest it somewhere else if we had a comparison between this investment and some other investment if we had three hundred thirty thousand dollars that we had access to either through in the bank or through financing is there some other investment that would be more worthwhile for us to do and get a higher return on that so those are all other things we can take into consideration but this is one component that we can do in a situation where we're considering uh purchasing equipment and that's a common scenario given the fact that we could say oftentimes we're doing something that has more labor hours that could be trimmed down with some kind of software or some kind of machinery. Okay, so if we go down, we've got our side by side comparison. Let's do the first one first. We're going to say, all right, we've got the fixed costs are at the 160,000. That's where our starting point is. Contribution margin per unit is going to be the sales price per unit, now $10 minus the variable cost per unit, which is the 4.75. Subtracting those out, we get the 5. Uh, two five. Then, if we take the one hundred and sixty thousand, and let's just do it real quick, the one hundred and sixty thousand divided by the five point two five. That's going to give us about thirty thousand four seventy six. That's the number of units that we would need to produce in the standard uh, scenario one. Let's plug that back in just to get used to our contribution margin income statement, where we would have sales, sales per unit ten dollars. Unit uh, sold is going to be what we are assuming in terms of the 30,476, because we want to see if this truly does get us to a break-even point, meaning net income being zero. 10 times the 30,476 gives us the 304,762 total sales. Then we calculate the variable costs, which are going to be the variable cost per unit at the 4.75 times the units, that 30,476, same as up here. That's our break-even in units. That'll give us the total variable cost of the 144,762. The contribution margin then being the total sales minus the total variable costs. We can also get there by taking the unit contribution margin, which once again is going to be that 5.25 about times the uh, times the 3476, and we get about the 160,000 here that way as well. Then we're going to subtract out the fixed costs, and that, of course, will bring us to zero, proving the fact that that uh, number of units is indeed the break-even point in units. Now let's do the second scenario where we're going to say, all right, we're going to we're going to buy this equipment, which means that in the current time period, the allocation of the depreciation will increase the fixed cost to two hundred thousand, but the variable costs are going to go down from four dollars and seventy-five cents to three dollars. Okay, well, if we take the fixed costs now being then the 200,000, then we take the contribution margin per unit, that's going to be the sales price $10 minus now the variable cost only being $3, that's going to give us a contribution margin of $7. $7, if we divide that into our new fixed cost of 200,000, we have 200,000 divided by the $7 is going to give us a 28,571 units. If we compare that to what we had before, it's going to be less less units here. So there we have that. So we have to, so this would decrease the number of units we would need to produce in order to, to hit a break even. We'll take a look at that comparison a little bit more in a second. Let's just prove this real quick. Net income, contribution margin type of income statement. We got the sales. Sales price per unit is 10. Units sold, 28,571. That's going to be to get us to our break even point. We're proving the break even point. We get the total sales of the 285,714. Then we have the variable costs. Variable cost being the $3 now. 
and the units is going to be that break-even unit, so the 28,571. That's going to give us total variable cost of 85,714. Sales minus the total variable cost gives us the contribution margin of the 200,000. We can also get to that 200,000 by taking the contribution margin per unit, 7, times the number of units, which is going to be times 28,571, and we get to our about... Uh, 200,000 about 200,000 again there's rounding involved in these numbers so then we're going to say that our fixed costs are going to be the 200,000 and that will then give us zero that is indeed our break even so if we compare the two then this is where we started at we're in order to break even we would have needed to produce the 30,476 units whereas if we buy the equipment and include the depreciation in the fixed costs even with that included depreciation, because of the decrease in the variable cost, we would only need to produce 28,571 in order to break even. So that's good, right? That's a good news. It's not where we would stop, however, because we would want to also consider how long the equipment would last, what's going to be the time value of money, how did we finance the equipment, and uh, is there some other place we could have put that 330000 that would possibly give us a greater return than the purchase of this equipment. But this is going to be one of those kind of statistics, one of those types of calculations we will do anytime we have a long-term uh, thought process into something that's going to be affecting multiple periods into the future. Then, of course, that's going to be a more detailed uh, type of decision because we're going to be locked in uh, to, to that type of decision. It's going to increase the fixed costs, which increases basically our operating uh, leverage, right? It locks, us, it locks us in. Those fixed costs are kind of locked in. So we want to think about that uh from multiple different angles this being one of them also note you can you can imagine how we would run these numbers into the uh, an income statement on a contribution margin format like this and start thinking about all right that's the break even point 28571 what what happens when we move up from the break even point we can start plugging in numbers from the current scenario and the new projection and start plotting out what would happen what if you know, we had sales of this many units, that many units, and so on and so forth, something we cannot directly do as easily with a normal type of income statement.